Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to another uh, installment, I guess we call them, <laughs> of uh, Conversations in Wire. I am your host, James Browning. I am a sales representative here for the Softflex company, and uh, currently we are in a stay-at-home state um, here in California where our gallery and our offices are. So um, today I am working from home and I'm going to make a video and I've decided to start showing you guys um, some chain mail techniques. Uh, today we're going to start with the 4-in-1 European. It is the uh, ultimate, the very first thing that you should learn as a chain mailer. Uh, it's the stuff they make armor out of. Um, you'll, you'll recognize it when you see it. So um, I'm also going to go over a couple of terms and... Um, like beginner tips just to get you started with the uh, uh, the whole chain mailing experience. The cool thing is that um, this technically is wire because you make rings, jump rings basically, out of wire, uh, both square and round wire. So you could definitely buy a spool of wire and make your own rings. I'll show you how to do that. Um, uh, or you can just purchase pre-cut rings online or you know at certain shops. Um, in fact, maybe even possibly Softflex in the future. We'll see. Um, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is what is chain mail. So this basically is what everyone probably recognizes as chain mail. It's basically metal fabric that was used to protect soldiers from arrows because the arrows would hit this and it would stop the arrows from piercing. This is... Um, this is the European 4-in-1 that we're going to talk about today that I'm going to show you. Um, basically, 4-in-1 means that there are four rings in every one ring. Um, this is what we're going to make today. So it's a much looser weave. And uh, the reason it's looser is because the diameter or the, the inner diameter of the rings are smaller. So... Um, that is called the ID of a ring. So if you take a look at a ring, where's the camera? There it is. Uh, so you have a regular ring here. This is 18 gauge wire and the inner diameter is uh, a quarter inch. So that's the, the ring size we're going to use for our projects today. Um, the aspect ratio is what a lot of projects are going to talk about when you start getting into um, specific weaves. The aspect ratio is going to be um, the inner diameter of the ring uh, divided by the actual diameter of the wire or the gauge. Um, the aspect ratio for this project is 5.5 and that's because it's the one millimeter uh, 18 gauge wire divided by whatever a quarter of an inch uh, is in millimeters, which I don't have that in front of me, unfortunately. But um, that's what we're going to talk about today is uh, making those rings. Um, the The thing with the aspect ratio is that the higher the number, the looser the weave. weave. So like with the four and one, they usually recommend a aspect ratio of 3.0 to 5.5 and the 5.5 is that really big that we're going to do today and we're doing big um, because it's going to be easy for you to see how to manipulate the rings but like that basically you would want to go for like a 4.1 ratio which is like an 18 gauge ring with the 3 16 inner diameter um, so if you want to make this uh, if you want to make your own rings or if you want to go out and buy rings and you want to work on um, a 4-in-1 European weave my suggestion is to go online and take a look at their Ring Lord. They have a lot of information on beginner weaving there. Um, also, uh, you can just Google uh, European 4 in 1 and there'll be lots of information for you. Um, but today, uh, we're just going to talk about how to make rings, how to open and close them, and then I'm going to show you the basic 4 in 1. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so we have our working space here, and I highly recommend, uh, if you do not have one, to get yourself a bead mat, because um, 
if you already bead, you probably know that beads run away, but rings are just as bad. So anything like a washcloth or these wonderful bead mats that we sell here at Softflex, you can find on our website, www.softflexcompany.com. Um, it goes into those. Uh, let's take a look at the project that we're going to do up close. This is the four in one weave. This is a four row, four in one weave. And uh, normally you start out with three rows and then you can expand it on either side. Um, the best thing to do is to get yourself some barrel clasps. And if you have a five row, no. The um, the number of strands on the barrel clasp will be um, according to how many rows, opposite rows you have. So if you have a um, a five row, then you'll be able to use a two hole because there'll be two extra rings that you can use. Um, so let's take a look at some other things that I've made with chainmail. This is uh, another weave, but chainmail is all just jump rings of various sizes both diameter, gauge, and inner diameter that are just linked together to form really cool, interesting patterns. Like I said, this is this is just a sheet of chain mail with tiny rings. These are stainless steel, so they do not... Um, when you're starting out with this, I would recommend going for aluminum rings because they will open and close much easier. Um, and you use specific muscles when you're doing chaining. So I would definitely recommend going with the lighter um, metals. But when you get better, then you can start going up to like stainless steel or even sterling silver. This is called a Byzantine weave. So teeny tiny rings there. Um, this is also a Byzantine, but if you see it's a much larger gauge with a larger inner diameter. Inner diameter. So it's the same exact weave, but just a different size of ring. So you can see just by changing up that in itself will change your project. This is also the same exact weave. Byzantine is actually my favorite weave. Um, but this is done with square wire rings. So see, even that makes it look different. And I apologize if you can hear any outside noises. I am doing this at my house and I have uh, neighbors and everyone is enjoying this lovely evening. So um, this is another one. Uh, it's not the Byzantine weave, it's just another weave, um, but there are multiple rings that are linked together in each and then they're all linked together. So um, if people do enjoy what I do here today, then we will keep going and we'll try different weaves together. This is um, a Byzantine, a form of Byzantine. There's the little Byzantine links, links here that are all linked together. And then it's joined by a bar link. So your whole bracelet or necklace doesn't have to be all chain mail. You can alternate it. It's just, it's a really fun craft to get into. All right, so let's talk about rings. Um, so what I did was I took just a standard dowel that I measured to be a quarter of an inch in diameter. Um, and then I got some 18 gauge wire, just like this. And I made a coil. So I just basically wrapped the wire around and around and around. And I made sure that everything was sitting right next to each other. And then I took that off the dowel. That part is kind of hard when you're using wood because the wood is soft and so it kind of grabs onto it. Um, but it, it, you can eventually get it off. You can kind of loosen up the, the rings a little by twisting in the opposite direction that you wound. And that will kind of open it up so you can slide it off. Um, cutting rings, you can do one of two ways. You can do it by hand with a pair of snips which is what I had to do because I do not have the other option, which is using a saw. And the saw gives you the best 
um, cut because it gives you a nice straight even cut and you don't have to worry about making sure you have a flat edge on both sides. But since we don't have that, what we're going to need is a good pair of flush cut pliers. Um, flush cut, you can tell it's flush cut because it is absolutely flat when you close it. I don't know if you can see that. See how there's no divot there? Let me get my other pair out. Here's my other pair. Now if you look, you can see there is a divot there. So it's not completely flush. And the reason that's important is because when you cut with these, these will cut one side exactly flat. And we want that because when we want to close our rings, we want to make sure that we've got a nice solid connection between those two pieces of wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut a link here. We're going to make sure that our pliers are going to be flat against this one side. Actually, let's start as if we were just pulling it off. So we have this weird piece of wire here. So I'm going to cut with the flat side facing left and I'm just going to snip and so now we have one end that's flat okay now I'm going to rotate my pliers so that they are facing the other direction and I'm going to go right next to where I cut go right up to the next link and you know if you don't want to cut the two links at once you can kind of spring this out a little um, don't spring it too much because it makes it more difficult to close later. So take our pliers and we're going to go right next to where we cut before because we want to kind of make it like right in line. And we're just going to snip. There, we have made a ring. Now, um, even if you purchase rings, most of the time they're going to be open like this. This is not an open ring. This is just a regular split ring. Well, not a split ring. <laughs> I should say freshly cut ring. Um, it's offset because of the coil. So just uh, keep going like that. And the next step is because this now has a point. If you can see that, there's a little point there. We don't want that. So we're going to take our flush cutters and we're going to turn them around so that they're facing to the left. And we're going to snip that little piece off. So now it's it's flat again. And now we're going to do it again. And you just keep doing this. Remember to face the pliers the opposite direction so that the flat is going to face the flat. And then clip. So now you've got another ring. Okay, let's do it one more time because this is fun. And then flip. And clip. Okay, so now you know how to make rings. Let's talk about opening and closing. The only other tools you're going to need when chaining are two pairs of pliers. Um, you're going to figure out which pliers you like the best. These, personally, uh, are not my favorite, but they are uh, what I had available to me. Um, actually, I have the exact same pair. Never mind. So I've got this pair, uh, which is a long nose, and then I've got a short pair of chain nose. So um, you could use a short pair of chain nose. You could use flat nose. Uh, bent nose are fine. Just not round nose because they don't grab very well. So um, this I can get away with because they're kind of flat. So, um, so you have your two pliers and the best thing to do is to find a pair of pliers that are really nice and comfortable because you're going to be doing this a lot. Back and forth, twisting and closing, opening and closing. So um, what I suggest is to get a pair of pliers that feel good in your hand. Um, I actually usually use um, Lindstrom RX because I have tendonitis and so uh, when I'm doing a lot of chaining I switch to those but if it's a quick um, project then that's not necessary 
All right, so to open and close a ring, I'm going to grab a ring and I'm going to try and get it in a nice grip. Not too hard because we don't want to mar our wire. We're just going to make it so that we can grip and twist. We're going to just uh, go in opposite direction with our hands and we're going to go back and forth until we make a solid connection. And if you look, there's a little gap there. What I like to do is kind of go back behind it a little and let it spring back naturally. Because what you want to achieve ultimately is a ring that is as close to closed. So there would be like no gap at all. Because the more gap we have on a ring, the easier it is for other rings to disconnect itself. So that's another reason why we really want flush cut rings and not snipped ones because with the snipped ones you have like a flat side and then you have a pointed side and so the connection is not quite as solid as two flat pieces together like that. Does that make sense? So let's close another one. I closed a bunch already so we can do this pretty quick. So we're just going to take it and you'll figure out your um, the way you hold them. Let's see if I can get this to concentrate on my fingers here. There we go. I'm trying to look through the screen here and do this at the same time. It's hard. Okay, so we're just going to twist in opposite directions. You can also just hold one steady and move the other side back and forth until you feel like you've got a nice close. Okay, now let's talk about opening. So we've got, what I did was I took two different colors. Um, I have silver for the closed ones and purple for the opening ones. So here's one just snipped off, so it's not quite open, not quite closed. And all I'm gonna do is just twist it so that it's open. Don't have to make them super wide. Um, you want them wide enough to be able to put rings on them easier and then close them without too much effort. So once again, let's open another one. Just a little twist. They have a great tool um, that you can get. It's a little ring that you put on your finger. It's got little slots in it and you can just put the ring with a plier and just twist it. So uh, that makes it opening really quick, but closing, I still prefer two pliers. All right, so I've got a pile of open and a pile of closed. Now I've got a lot more closed than I do open because for this, I need approximately two closed rings for every open ring. All right, and the other thing I'm going to advise you get is a piece of scrap wire. And I'm going to say put one ring on that scrap wire and close it up. So this is going to be basically like your starting point. So we're going to take an open. And we're going to uh, grab four. This is just the very first one. This is getting started. So I want four on this first one, two, three, four. And then I'm also just gonna throw this one on here too. I can always take that ring off later. And I'm gonna close the ring. Oops, see, now we're out of focus again. Okay, there we go. That's a, another thing we will need to make sure of is if you are grabbing too hard when you're trying to open and close, you're going to find that uh, you're going to slip. So just take your time and concentrate and then you can get it. 
one of the things that I've heard uh, when you're doing this is if you make it click, that means you're close enough and you're going to see a really nice solid join. Okay, so now we've got four, well, technically five on one. What we're going to do is we're going to make this into the first weave. We're going to lay out our rings so that they sit like that. Basically, they're just stacked on top of each other with the ring going through. You want two on one side and three on the other. Now remember, this one of these is just your tail. So that can come off later. Now, uh, I don't remember who it was that I was watching, but they said that the important thing when you're making this is to make a mouse head. So you got your first four, uh, so it's kind of like a mutant mouse, she said, but the the two on the top are the ones you want to really pay attention to. So you can grab it and make sure all of your wires or your rings are laid the right way. And then you see there's like the top of the mouse head and it's two ears. So that's the important thing. We always want to look for this when we're doing it because you can get them all switched up. You can have them like, like that or something. So just make sure that you've got all of your rings where you want them to be. Okay, so now our next step is we're going to grab another open and we're going to put two closed on it. Okay, now this is the tricky part. We're going to go down through the right one and we're going to come back up through the left. Okay. And then we're going to gently let it go, grab our pliers, and we're going to close it up. Okay, so we've made our first one. Now we just have to remake our mouse head. So we just put our rings back the way that they were, and we do it again. Grab one, put two on it two, there we go, and we're going to go down through the right one, or the bottom one, and up through the top one. And then just close it so it's nice and tight. And do it again. Just put our rings back. Get our little mouse head showing up there. See, so the important thing is because you can actually go through the wrong way. Let me show you what happens when that happens. So if you went through like the bottom and you thought you were doing it the right way, you would end up making them all just fall in line. And it would be basically like a two in one chain. And that's not what we're looking for. So let's get our mouse hat back together. Okay, there it is. And then we're gonna go up through the right, down. Oh no, see that was the wrong way. <laughs> we're doing it wrong. Um, down through and up. There we go. Okay, so say you laid this down and you walked away. This is one of the reasons why I say put an extra ring on there so you know what's going on, where you started, and then you can pull that up and then you take a look at the middle rings and they should all be falling in line if you did it right, which apparently I did not. Why? Oh, no, we did fine. No, we didn't. We did backwards. Okay, so see, teaching moment. This is why we pay attention to what we're doing. Oh, wait. 
Okay, so we are fine. So if you look at it, all of the rings are laying basically on top of each other in the right direction. It's just that this weave is so loose, the uh, aspect ratio is so big that the rings just lay funny. So you'll find that if you use a smaller aspect ratio, which means um, basically you make your inner diameter smaller with the same size of gauge. I just don't have any smaller dowels. I think that's one of the reasons why it's such a large diameter. Uh, so we should be fine to keep one. So we're gonna take <clears throat> an open one and we're gonna put two closed ones. And we're gonna go down through the outside, up through the top one. And that's another reason like you can totally check is if it hangs and every ring is going in the right direction, you're good to go. And then just close it up. Okay, now uh, this is just three rows, one, two, three, okay? Now if we wanted to make this bigger, we would want to take some uh, open rings and we're going to go grab our piece and we're going to go so the second set of rings here we're going to go up through that and then we're also let's get you closer to the camera so you can see we're going to go up through that ring and then we're also going to catch that top one so we're basically going through two at the same time I'm going to close it. And then we can go to the next one. So we're going to go down one more, grab that, and then go up through the second one. and close it up. So now we have a third row coming, or a fourth row happening here. That top ring is not doing what I wanted it to. But let's just add one more and see what happens. So I'm going to go. So this was this was the one that we did last. I'm gonna go down to this one, grab it, and the one on top of it. Because, like I said, this is four and one, so that means that each ring has four rings on it. So let's close this up real quick. And let's count them. So this silver ring has one, two, three, four purple rings in it. See how that works? So let's go down one. And grab the one on top. All right, so that is your basic four-in-one weave. So I think that is it for today. You know what, let's do one more just so we've got just like a good ending so we know what's going on. So we're going to make our mouse ears. And then we're going to grab our open ring. And I don't know if I said it yet, but uh, one of the most time saving things to do when prepping for a chainmail project is to determine how many open rings 
to every closed ring and get those done ahead of time because that is going to save so much time, I tell you what. All right, we're gonna grab two open rings and we're going to go up through the bottom one and down through the top one. No, we're not, that was wrong. We're gonna go down through the bottom one and up through the top. There we go, see how it hangs differently? I'll show you that one more time. So we, what I say, top and then bottom, and how it closes all up like that. That's not what we want. So reset, and we're gonna go down through the top, up through the bottom, and it sits differently. All right, so there you have it. Basic four in one chain. Um, I may try and finish up this and make a bracelet out of it or something. Um, but I think you guys have a handle on this. As always, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section. I will get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, please share the video. And if you get into this chaining stuff, um, feel free to join our VIB group. Uh, that's our Facebook group for the Selflex company. Just look up a uh, very important beater and uh, post your pictures. I'd love to see them. All right. Thanks again for hanging out with me and you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.